In the previous module, we installed Android Studio on our system. We created a new project and ran our first Hello World application. We explored the various components that make this Hello World application and understood how these components work. Okay, now that we have a better understanding of how our simple Hello World app works, let's work on tweaking it a little bit. First thing, let's head on to the activity underscore main.xml file and change the UI a little bit. Currently our view uses a constraint layout as its root view. Um, apart from constraint layout, Android also provides many other layouts like the grid layout, frame layout, linear layout. Linear layout is of two types. One is vertical, one is horizontal. Then there's a relative layout, table layout, etc. Um, the constraint layout was released recently and is a new new layout that Android has brought forward. I've uh, provided a link in the slides for you to get a better understanding of constraint layout. Also, there are two ways to build UI in, in Android Studio. You can either choose to code it using XML or use the interface provided by Android. The interface provided by Android will seem a little confusing in the beginning, but with practice, you can get really quick and fast at it. I would suggest that you go through the link provided in the slides for the constraint layout and get used to the constraint layout as soon as possible. If you're serious about Android application development. For the time being, we're going to use XML to, co to make our UI so that you get a better understanding of how it works. Okay, so now I'm trying to build a, a UI wherein I'm trying to get a screen with a text view on top followed by a edit text, a text box below it. A text box is something there where a user can enter using the keyboard. It's called an edit text in Android. And below the edit text, I wanna put a button, which will basically, so basically the functionality that we're trying to implement is the is that whatever text the user enters in the edit text box, and once he clicks on the button, the text in the text view will be replaced by the text that the user has entered. So let's see how we can do this. Let's take off everything and build it from scratch. Let's start with the linear layout as our root view. Here Android Studio is saying that the namespace declaration for Android is not in this XML file. To auto import this namespace, click on Alt and Enter together. Then we can add the layout width as match parent. The layout height as match parent and also spe also specify an orientation for this to be vertical now that we have a linear layout set up we can also set put the background image from it now first we need a text view let's leave this as match parent and wrap content Let's give it a style of what we defined earlier. Next, let's, let's put our edit text and app content. And finally, a button, which can also be matched. And let's put a text to this, which can be click me to replace. And as I said earlier, it's not good practice to and let's go here strings and put it here. All right. So now we have a basic UI set up. Let's run our app and see how it looks. Okay. So, uh, 
view looks good next let's see how we can access these widgets that we have just added as in a web app you have to add IDs for the widgets that you need so let's add an ID for the text view let's call it text view ID would be edit text and for the button it can be button and to access these in main activity we simply have to define a variable first text view and, the, and use the ID that we've just assigned similarly for the edit text and for the button Again, so button, we have to import the button widget into the main activity.java class. For that, I have to press Alt and Enter. Uh, please note that on a Windows system, this might be different. Um, but Android Studio will provide you a prompt with how to do this. Button. Now, to programmatically set a text for this text view, we can do something like this. And to access the click of the button, set, we have to set an on click listener onto the button. And this is basically an interface that we have to implement. So that one way to do it would be this way. So now we have set an click listener onto this button which is an interface so each time the button is clicked this method would get called let's see if this works again please note that you should always use a string resource file for these kind of changes let's show a toast when the button is clicked. Toast is an Android widget which you will see in action in a few seconds. So to create a toast you have to do toast.make text, pass it the activity context which would be main activity dot this, pass in the string that you want to show, button click and choose the length to which you want to show it for so there are two options for this length short or length long um, oops let's show length long and do a dot show all right let's run the app and see this as you can see button is clicked the new text has been assigned programmatically Okay, so now let's implement the function that we set out to implement. Let's take this out. And as you can see, this was the toast I was talking about, the button clicked. All right, so on button click, first, let's check if the user has <coughs> entered some text into the edit text box. So, will be equal to edit text dot get text to string so this is the string that the user has entered and if he has not entered anything then this would be a empty string let's also trim it to take off all the spaces from the closing edges let's check if this string is empty now in case this string is empty let's show an alert and if it's not, replace text view. Let's create a method to show an alert. To show an alert, you have to first create a builder. Let's 
and send it a context which would be this this is to set the title to the alert set message no string to replace and let's also set a neutral button it says cancel and it requires an on click list now as you can see so here when the cancel button is clicked we a method called on click gets called which gives us the dialog let's dismiss the dialog and then finally builder dot show to show the dialog this is to build the dialog next let's make a method to replace the text this can be new text and so this method receives a new new text and we simp now we have to access this text view in this method for this we have to make this text view glo global so let's do that do this and do this so now we have text view dot set text new text new text all right and how that can be done here is show alert or replace text with enter text okay um, now this should work okay so now let's run the app and see this in action there's our uh, alert or oh, we're still showing the toast because we have not really taken the toast out of here let's do that and on the app again okay so if you if you click the button with no string with nothing entered it shows us a alert and you can enter anything you like and that gets replaced let's also do let's also implement a feature wherein once the button is clicked the edit text is emptied for this we need to do it when the text is replaced and we need to access the edit text globally as well Um, edit text had become final because we were accessing it inside the interface. Okay, so now here let's do edit text dot set text clear. Okay, so now let's run the app. Alright, so it works. The thing that I would like to talk about are log statements. Logs are helpful to debug your code and better understand what is exactly happening in your app. Uh, the easiest way to use a, to set up a log is to call log dot i which stands for informative. Apart from i we have d, e, v which stands for debug, error and verbose. Uh, in this case let's use i it accepts two parameters one is a tag and another one is a message so the tag would be usually you can make the tag as the place where you're at and the message can be inside on create 
better practice would be to set up a static string called tag for all the logs in your activity and simply replace this with it. a good exercise that all of you should try out would be to implement the lifecycle methods like on resume on pause on destroy put the log statements in each of these and see it in action to view log statements you simply have to run the app and check the android monitor just to clear as you can see there's a log which says with the tag and main activity which says inside on create you can filter it based on your tags and your log also you can change the different types over here to filter them even further with this we come to the end of this module in this module we have looked at how to use xml to change the ui for our app we've used android widgets like a toast and an alert we've also started using logs in our app developer.android.com is the website to visit to learn more about android it has information from how android works till how to develop on android 2 in great details um experiment with the ui there are multiple ways of doing anything that you want in a mobile app find the method that is best suited to your needs and keep experimenting check out constraint layout it is something new that android has released recently themes and styles are very important while developing a mobile application they are present to avoid code duplication and to facilitate code reusability um to learn more about themes and styles please visit the link also start implementing themes and styles in your development practice from the start so that it becomes a habit use the android community to learn and explore stack overflow will almost always have answers to all of your questions uh, android studio is a very very powerful tool it's a very powerful ide with a lot of features get familiar with android studio and the android studio shortcuts to improve your development speed and if in doubt do not hesitate to post in the forum or get in touch with me via twitter in the next module we will be building a simple blog app this will be similar to the web app that you guys have built we will be making network api calls in this blog app um we will be using the same api calls that were assigned to you as tasks at the end of the module we'll also be integrating third party libraries into our apps to make our lives easier and to increase our development speed and finally we'll be using a very important widget in the android ecosystem called the recycler view 